Hey everybody and welcome to another screencast um, where I walk through how I build components that we um, use and that I build for Lemon Squeezy. If you don't know what Lemon Squeezy is, um, go to lemonsqueezy.com and have a look. It's a new e-commerce platform that we're building for digital goods. Um, and uh, yeah, these videos are basically just a kind of walkthrough of how I build some of the components that we have in Lemon Squeezy. Um, so today we're having a look at this um, pricing component that we have. It is uh, uh, when you create a product in Lemon Squeezy, you get to choose between single payments and subscription payments, um, depending on what type of product you have. And this is a simple kind of toggle that we have here that lets you choose. And depending on the value of this, more fields will appear that will allow you to set a price and, and different options and that kind of thing. Um, so today we're going to have a look at this com uh, this component, how to build it. I'm not going to focus so much today on uh, the tailwind side of things. I'm more going to focus on the view side of things because there's some interesting um, things we do with the data from a viewpoint of view. And we use some um, other um, options as well that view offers us like vmodel and slots. So we're going to have a, a kind of quick overview of these things uh, today. So. So let's. Uh, the first thing I'm just going to show you is this parent component. So um, I'm just going to clean this up a wee bit. So this is our parent component that we have. Um, it, this is our toggle component within it. And um, as you can see here, we've just got a, a couple of things in here um, that are worth noting. One is, is that we've got a value which holds uh, the value of our um, toggle. And we also have this options computed prop, um, which basically is a, is a convenient way of defining what options we want to have in our toggle. Um, and I'll explain a bit more later why we've, we've done it in an object instead of just hard coding them. Um, but basically it's so that you can have as many options as you want and there's an easy way to extend this component. Um, so uh, how we're gonna like deal with this value is by using vModel and view. Um, and if you've never done this before, um, you'll if you've used view before, you'll, you'll know that when you create an input field, you can use vModel to bind the value of the input to your data and make it reactive. Um, so you would normally do, you know, like input and then you would do vModel and value and that would when the when the when you when the when you updated this input field, the value would update dynamically. Um, but you can actually do the same thing with custom components. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to treat this like it's a a, a form field basically. And if you go into the view documentation, they kind of outline how this all works. Um, but it's reasonably simple in that basically it's this is kind of syntactic sugar. It's shorthand for this, which is that you pass in a value prop or a prop called value and you listen for an input event and um, that's how you that's how you synchronize the value basically in this custom component so we pass it in as v model and we also pass in our options array so um, let's head over to our component then and define some props so the first prop that we need is value and, and this is a a, a hard coded name for this. This is, it's always called value. Um, you can edit it, but I'm just going to stick with the default at the moment. And we're just going to say that it's required. And we also have our options prop, which is an object. And it's also going to be required. Um, so that's our, our data. <coughs> Excuse me for dying temporarily there, but um, yeah. So this this V model has a, a value and an input, and um, so yeah, we're going to use this value that we've put in. Um, I think ESLint's complaining here that it needs to have a type. In our case, we know it's going to be a string because we're using object keys. So I'll just do this to get rid of the warning. Um, yeah. So that's our data in our prop. So let's um, start to build the HTML for this. So. Um, as you can see here, these are basically the equivalent of radio options. There always needs to be one selected and there can be one or many. So a simple way to build this is to um, just basically think about this as a bunch of radio, <coughs> radio inputs. Um, and what we'll do then is we'll 
and we'll just um, build them, but we'll build them in a loop um, so that we dynamically output the number of radio inputs that we've defined in our options object. Um, so our option has, um, each option will have two things, it's a key and a value. In this case, we'll call them label and option. Um, in options, and when you do a v4 like this in view, you always need to define a key. Um, and then inside our label, we can do an input and we'll make it a radio and it will have the value of option. And whenever this value changes, we want to emit our input event. Um, and the value that we emit will be the option. Now remember this input is um, views hard coded name for the <coughs> for the event that we need to emit when something changes. The last thing I'm just going to add in here is our checked um, parameter so that um, the radio will be checked when the value equals this option. So I think that might be us if I save that. Um, Oh yeah, we forgot the label. Let's add the label here too. There we go. So we have a single payment and subscription and I can click these two and the option changes. So that's the, the basic HTML um, structure for what we're going to build. Um, it's now technically a working component. Um, if, I, if I go to view here and go to the component, you'll see the value here will update based on what we've defined in our keys for our options. Um, and just to demonstrate here, you know, if you did want to add more, you know, you could do um, something like this. And, you know, that's part of the what makes this so ex flexible and extendable is having this options array. Um, so I think that's it for the, the, the basic uh, component. We'll, we'll style it now. I'm just going to copy some styles from um, the, the pre-built component. I'm not going to talk through all the different um, styles that I'm using here. Um, we're just going to give it a, make it look like it's, um, you know, it's got this kind of box and background color, um, border, that kind of thing. Uh, let me just double check that works. Um, we need to give it an active um, class or we need to change the style when it's active. So. Um, I'm just going to remove these dark classes here. Um, so this is Vue's way of allowing you to set classes based on some condition. Um, so you can do this dynamically in Vue. Um, and so in our case, you know, when, when it's active, when the option selected, we want it to have a white background and a, a different color border. So we're just going to do that. And now you can see like the active one has a different style. Um, and we're also going to just do a quick flex so that we can split the options in a, in a row. Um, I've, I've made them width a half here because I know that we've only got two, but if you did have more options, you could you could do the whole flex wrap thing, um, remove, the <coughs> remove the width, and then if I go back here and let's see, I add some more options. Um, just, let me just do this. You can see here that you know it would wrap, and you could have as many options as you as you want, really. Um, but we're only going to have two in our case, so I think in in that case it's okay just to define the width as fifty percent. We can get rid of the wrap, and what I'll do is I'll just put a space between them. Is it flex space one or two? <clears throat> so, um, so that's our our, our box. Uh, we can get rid of the, or we can hide the actual input because this is really just for um, semantics. We don't actually need to show that because the label will handle the the kind of clicks. Um, and what else do we need to do here? Yeah, so that this label. So you'll see here in the completed component, we have. Uh, you know, two different lines, different styles. Basically what we want to do is almost like have HTML um, in these options. And obviously they want, we want, they want to be different for each option. Now, we just have these simple strings. You know, this is our label at the moment and they're just, it's just been pulled from here. And it may be tempting to want to, you know, like put HTML in here and 
maybe give it a different style and do all that kind of thing. But you'll notice that view um, just um, escapes the HTML for us. And yeah, it's just, it's not really, it's just not really a good idea putting HTML on strings like this. So how would, what's the best way to put HTML in here and make sure we're able to change it depending on each option? Well, thankfully, um, Vue has a concept called slots. Now, slots, I'm not gonna go into all the ins and outs of slots, you can read the Vue docs to see um, how they work, but basically what it means is that we can define some content in our parent um, and it'll appear wherever we put the slot in our component. So just to demonstrate that, um, here's our, the, in, the, in the parent component, we've got our, our toggle class um, and say we, you know, I'll just put some nonsense in here just now. If I do that, you'll see that this has appeared here now because we've got our slot because of the slot. So this label that we had before is now being replaced by the content that we put here. Um, so that's great. That gets us most of the way there and slots are great for um, for this kind of thing. Um, but obviously we want the content to be different for each option. We don't want to show the same content for every option. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, you can name your slots and obviously um, this allows you to have different types of slots. Um, if you, you know, you can have put slots, have multiple slots and put them in different positions um, and you can give them any name you want. Um, but that's not going to particularly help us in this case because um, we can't like hard code, you know, this is option one, this is option two, because we've got them in this for loop. Um, so thankfully what we can do though is give the slot a dynamic name. So what we're going to do is just literally give the slot name the option key. So remember this is the, the key from the options object that we're passing in here. Um, so now what you'll see is that the, the slot content isn't here because there's no default slot, but instead there is a named slot. So to add content to a named slot in a view, you can um, use this template syntax and to define which slot it should go in, you use this hash to say, I want it to go into the slot with the name single. Now remember single here um, relates to the key of the options object. So in here, I want to add a a p tag is not going to let me add it. No. Um, and uh, what's this called? Single payment. There we go. And so now you can see that the slot isn't being used for subscription. We're still just showing the label for the up from the options array. But for this single payment now, that now that I've defined a slot for it, name slot, we're showing different content. So we can also add in our. Um, our kind of subtitle in here, and we can <clears throat> give this some styling if we want to now, because it's you know just normal view, normal HTML. Um, I think this is fun. Medium GitHub Copilot's messing up all my auto completes. Um, I think this is text gray by the looks of it. Yeah, great. So there we go. <clears throat> One. Um, component done. And so we want to add one for subscription now. So we do the same thing, just copy and paste. We can use the subscription key from our options, remember. That's the name of this slot. Um, and it has slightly different content, obviously. So we're going to call it subscription and we're going to say that it charges an ongoing fee. There we go. So pretty good, we're getting most of the way there. This looks pretty good. Um, the last thing that we need to do is have this kind of tick mark that we've kind of got here um, for the selected style. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is just copy, literally this is just an, an SVG um, <clears throat> that we've got here. And what I'm gonna do is just copy this whole class, this whole div, sorry, um, into here and dump it in here. And I'll just quickly explain what's happening. So. The label is relative, and so what we're doing is we're saying, you know, show this div if the value is selected and put it absolute position in the top right and just add some padding. And this is the SVG itself. So if I save that and give this a refresh, we should see now that the tick appears for the active option. Um, and yeah, and I think that's us really. That's our toggle component. Um, and remember, 
you know, we made it very flexible by giving it options. So um, if we wanted to, you know, again, remember, you can add more options for one, uh, two, three, if you wanted to do that. And um, what did I do here? Oh, yeah, I did flex wrap to make it break. Um, and yeah, we're, we're kind of messing things up here. We need to take the width off. But yeah, that was, you know, if you wanted to add more options, you could do that and give it a margin bottom. And yeah, so that's kind of the gist of, of this component. But um, yeah, that's how I would build our, I'm just going to put this back to the way it was, toggle component for Lemon Squeezy. Um, so hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully you're enjoying these screencasts. Uh, please let me know if, um, these are helpful. If there's things that you would like to know more about, um, if there's things you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know if there's a different format you'd prefer. <clears throat> and um, yeah, hopefully you're getting some value out of this and uh, like and subscribe, I guess, if you want more. So yeah, thanks.